In Elden Ring, there is a new class of ranged weapons named the Ballistas, which consist of the Hand Ballista and the Jar Cannon. Many have already showcased their usefulness in invasions, and why some would consider them an essential tool to have just from their range, damage, and knockback. In previous Soulsborne games, there was no Ballista class. Instead, what we had were Great Bows for long range damage. When I first started invading, we didn't have any fancy schmancy cannons. We had a stick, string, and a great arrow for invasions, and we had to notch the arrow. Great bows are in Elden Ring, but you'll rarely see them used by players. Does that mean that they're bad? Nah. Ah, oh, shit! Here we go again. He's trying to trap us! It's why I'm the leader, you idiots! Stay here, huddle close! No inappropriate touching! Let's get one thing straight. The Ballista and Cannon are the sniper ranged answer to those long ranged engagements, there's no getting around that. Being incredible at their job, due in part to Elden Ring's huge overworld and a couple of instances in Legacy Dungeons. Ballistas were made as an option to damage targets that were ridiculously far. Great Bows on the other hand feel like they're in the middle ground between a bow and a ballista while having more firepower than a bow, but being more agile than a ballista. Make no mistake, while ballistas certainly stole the limelight on great bows in the beginning of the game, that doesn't mean great bows can't shine. Now that a couple of people have been discovering great bows and how effective and fun they can be, I wanted to hopefully show why they are. Now, why would you use them in the first place anyway when the ballista class exists? 
Well, great bows when compared to ballistas have a few things over them in terms of attributes. For instance, when compared, the jar cannon will fire faster than the great bow, but the great bow will recover faster which means you can either move or fire another shot. Not to mention, the cannon is heavy dude! Like, majority of great bows are on the lighter side in comparison. They also have less of a strength requirement in order to use, and while they do have a higher dexterity requirement, you do get the benefit of great bows having scaling while ballistas do not. Lastly, great bows have Ashes of War, which offers something to the table in different scenarios, while the ballistas only have the basic kick. Before we go more into how great bows play, we gotta do a little homework. Now I know, I hear y'all, let's go ahead and move on to the great bows, I know. Let's go ahead and look at them, we have four at the time of this video, and I hope if we get a DLC that this statement ages like milk. First up is the Golem Great Bow, weighing 14.5 Miyazakis and requiring 24 in strength and 18 in dex, it can be obtained as a random drop from the Golem Archers you can find in the overworld. It comes with the Ash of War through and through, which puts you in a stance before firing. Three out of the four Great Bows use this Ash of War, and whenever you use it you will enter a stance before pressing the arrow you would like to choose. When selected, you will notch the great arrow back and immediately fire preventing you from holding the arrow like you could do in Dark Souls 3. It has a piercing property to it so when this is shot into a crowd or line of enemies, it will go through them. I feel like I should also mention that this Ash of War does not increase velocity or the range of the great arrow shot, which is admittedly unfortunate. While it's pretty straightforward, it's not bad at all. The Golem Great Bow itself, while being the heaviest Great Bow, does give you the most damage compared to the other Great Bows. So if you're relying on just standard shooting, stick with this one in particular. Second is the Lion Great Bow, which you can get by defeating Radon and trading his Remembrance. It weighs 9.5 Miyazakis, being the lightest in its class, and requires 22 in strength and 18 in dex in order to wield. While being the least damaging physical only great bow in the class, it does gain a 20% damage increase to its great arrow ammunition, Radon Spears. Using it with this arrow can net some pretty respectable damage when compared to the others. Having another Lion Great Bow equipped in your other hand will also grant an additional 20% boost, letting you have a whopping 40% increase in damage, which is insane. The other outlier with this great bow is that it has a unique Ash of War, that being Radon's Reign. When using it, you will crouch down in a stance before you shoot it into the sky. Locking onto a target will cause 17 arrows of the one you use to fire to fall on an opponent. It costs 32 FP, which is pretty high for an Ash of War, but the damage potential for it is pretty high if all the arrows land. But good luck on that, as that's pretty difficult although I will touch more about this Ash of War a little later on. Now for the black sheep in the class, the Erdtree Great Bow, which is the earliest Great Bow you can obtain since it's located in the Fringe Folk Hero's Grave. The only challenge is shooting down the big urns up top to fall on the chariot, which upon the chariot exploding you will obtain it. It weighs 11 Miyazakis, requires 20 in strength, and 14 in both Dex and Faith in order to wield. This is the only split damage in Great Bow and is unique in that it is a long ranged option for Faith users and deals holy damage to boot. Scaling primarily with Faith, it provides a good boost with the Golden Great Arrow. Unfortunately, because of the innate split damage in this bow and overall lack of unique traits, I have to recommend not using this unless you have little investment in strength and Dex. Last but certainly not least, the standard Great Bow. Weighing 10 Miyazakis and requiring 20 in strength and dex, it is obtained in Atlas Plateau in a chest at the top of this specific tower. Overall, it seemingly looks like a standard regular addition to a weapon class, but it does have a unique trait in that it's the only Great Bow in the class that can be given in Ash of War. That's awesome, right? Now, let's see, um, 
Jash of War can I put on? What? No, no, all right. I know that sounds bad. So at first glance, this property of it seems pretty mediocre, but there is one other Ash of War we can use on this great bow. Rain of Arrows. It costs 20 FP and acts similar in Radon's Rain in that it fires an arrow into the sky, which instead of the 17 arrows in Radon's Rain, it spawns 7 arrows to fall on a locked on target. It looks like an inferior version of Radon's Rain, but if you want a consistent, more damage to arrow ratio, then you should use Great Bow with Rain of Arrows, which I'd recommend when invading. Just like with Radon's Rain, I have a lot to talk about it and Rain of Arrows, as they're really important, but I will get back to them, don't you worry. For some scaling info for the Great Bows, I'll go ahead and include that here. I'd recommend going more towards strength investment as the scaling is great on the Golem's Great Bow, with strength only being slightly better in terms of the Lion and Standard Great Bow. Also a little tip I can give is that when using Great Bows, you obviously two-hand them. And while two-handed, you gain a 1.5 multiplier, which means that the strength requirement on Great Bows is actually lower than the listed amount. For example, the Great Bow has a 20 strength requirement, but even at 14th strength, you can still use the weapon without the penalty of not reaching 20 strength while two-handing. Although since you do want to get the most bang for your buck in terms of using a great bow, investing in strength is going to be the best move anyway. That covers the class of weapons. You can't really go wrong with any one you choose, but if your stats allow it, I'd recommend keeping as many as you can wield since they all have certain scenarios where one could be more advantageous versus another. They all have the same amount of range, so no one great bow shoots further than the other, so you can have quite the arsenal to use if you have an itch to scratch. Now, while we covered the weapons, we gotta talk about the ammunition, as that's just as important. At the time of this video, we have 7 great arrows to choose from. They each offer something to the table in terms of damage, obtainability, and attributes. For certain situations, you could justify the need for one arrow versus the other, but they can all be used. Now, landing a shot against a moving target with a great bow versus the ballista is more troublesome, since two of the ballista's ammo causes an AoE explosion, that being the lightning great bolt and the explosive great bolt, which makes it much easier to land, since you just have to hit somewhere around the target in order to deal damage. Although we don't have a Millwood equivalent Great Bow to cause an AoE, we do have one other option, thankfully. Golem Great Arrows. Not only the most damaging physical Great Arrow, but it flies further than all of the other Great Arrows and causes an AoE upon impact. To gain this Great Arrow, you do have to endure a tedious grind of defeating Golem Archers, which the most consistent farm won't be accessible until you arrive at the Grace in Atlas Plateau. If you do get them, congratulations because you got one of the best arrows in the game. Synergizing amazingly with Reign of Arrows and Radon's Reign and can even work well with Through and Through since the AoE's damage is increased. Also knocking people around or knocking them off ledges will make you smile when you do it, I promise. <laughs> If fighting a shield user, you could even aim behind them and they'll be able to get hit due to the AoE nature of this great arrow. They'll be thinking they're safe, and nope. So the only downside to golem great arrows is that they are rare to get. I'm not saying that you should, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't, but you could have a friend dupe you some ammo, or you could farm and back up your save to not run out of them. Again. Not saying you should or shouldn't. 
With Golem Great Arrows, it makes hitting targets much easier versus a typical Great Arrow. Also, no. Golem's Magic Great Arrow does not have an AoE, despite how the visual may look, which is a travesty. Also, why don't we have a Lightning Great Arrow? I know it was present in Dark Souls and this is a different game, but for crying out loud, the archers even use them in this game. Miyazaki, why do you hate us archers, man? Why? Holy shit! Alright, so now that we talked about the Golem Great Arrow, I want to touch upon Reign of Arrows and a little of Radon's Reign as they deserve their own segment. When I personally use Great Bows, I usually use the standard Great Bow with the Reign of Arrows Ash of War. When locked onto a target and you use Reign of Arrows, you will shoot the arrow of your choosing into the sky and it seems that an invisible projectile rises from the target's head until it hits either a limit or a ceiling at which point it will shoot seven of your arrows onto the target below. This makes it to where low ceiling areas are more advantageous to you since arrows will not only spawn faster, but also time the spread of arrows onto your opponent's head. Also, did I mention it could headshot? This Ash of War is also great for elevators and ladders. Once an opponent is climbing or ascending, they might as well drop the controller. Ledges in small confined areas will also time the spread. Another useful quirk is that the camera itself is super useful as you can peer around corners or holes and be able to lock onto a target even if not in direct line of sight of your character. You can lock on, cast Rain of Arrows, and they have no warning besides the twang of your bow. Even if you lose sight of the target with your lock on, you have about 3 seconds to use it before it locks off. Be careful though as if you do lose your lock on, you'll just cast on top of yourself wasting an arrow, FP, and your position. Using the Ash of War unlocked also has its use, since the arrows will spawn on top of you which can be just the right play if a target gets too overzealous towards you. Paired with Golem's Great Arrow, you have one of, if not the most powerful Great Bow tool in your arsenal. For Radon's Reign, you can use it much the same way and potentially get more damage out of it, but because of the FP to damage ratio, I would personally recommend Reign of Arrows on the Great Bow instead. There is one thing about Radon's Reign, though it is very situational in comparison, which is you can sometimes combo a sparking aromatic or a gravity fan while the arrows are falling on top of you. Since the spread of the arrows is random though, this isn't always consistent and is more flashy if anything. Now, don't think that after all this time I forgot about talismans. We have a couple in particular that can net us some bonuses should you feel like really optimizing your damage or increase your range, which we'll start with the Arrows Reach Talisman, which increases range on all your bows. It causes an increased level of zooming when aiming with the reticle and causes the arrow's fire to go further than normal. Not particularly my cup of tea, but it does have another effect which you may not know. Arrow's Reach also increases the range where Reign of Arrows can spawn on a target. So at max range, you can lock onto and land a Reign of Arrows where without the Talisman, it will just land on top of you. Niche, but could come in handy. For a good standard increase in damage, look no further than the Bow Sting Talisman, which increases your bow damage by 10% in PvP. If you want another 10% increase, then the Ritual Sword Talisman is for you. Just keep in mind, you're gonna have to keep your HP topped off to get the effect. If you get damaged or you don't wanna use it, you could always substitute it with the Spear Talisman instead in order to gain a boost to counter thrust damage, which luckily for you, all arrows deal thrust damage and yes, 
even the AoE on a Golem Great Arrow. If you're relying on Ashes of War of Great Bows, then Shard of Alexander is going to be your best friend, boosting all Ashes of War by 15%, which means a ton of damage. If you run all of these, remember that all of these stack multiplicatively, so you can very well 3 to 2 shot people. Hmm. But why not we go even further? Fire's Deadly Sin requires blood loss due to Blood Flame Blade, it's a great option for chasing down Maidenless Tarnish to spam the dodges. I want to give a shout out to Dang it JM for doing a build similar to this in Dark Souls 3. If you haven't watched this video on the one shot Great Bow, do yourself a favor and give it a gander when you can. It still holds up. Now for this segment, I'm going to cover some brief things should you want to try a one shot Great Bow build. In Elden Ring, and this may not be the most optimized way of doing this, but with how many damage buffs you can stack in Elden Ring, this works perfectly for me. The main star of this build is the Great Bow with Reign of Arrows, since the damage potential is already so high when combined with Golem Great Arrows, and since Reign of Arrows only consumes one Great Arrow, I'm counting this as a one shot. So how do we increase the damage on it? Well, due to scaling, we can level both our strength and dex to 54 equally to get the most optimal damage due to the soft caps. Now, if you recall, I went over the talismans that increase bow damage, such as the Arrow Sting, Ritual Sword, and Alexander Shard. Combine these already have a huge boost, but there is one other talisman that we can use to push our damage, which is the Blue Dancer Charm Talisman, which boosts damage the lower your equip load is. For purposes of a build like this, with our equipment weight, it provides a 13% increase in damage. With all these combined, you're probably thinking, well gee derpy, do we really need all this damage? Yes. Mainly just due to the fact Reign of Arrows could miss one or two shots. But if you have enough damage, it may just be enough with the shots that do land. You could even use body buffs like Flame Grant Me Strength, shooting yourself with a Gold Great Arrow, or an Uplifting Aromatic. However, they either last too short, provide a low increase, take a while to cast, or are way too noticeable. However, there is one that is relatively fast, provides a huge damage boost and is relatively hidden, which is the Blood Boil Aromatic. Boosting damage by 20% for 21 FP for 60 seconds, this will lower your defenses, yes, but due to your defenses being low anyway and you're ideally at range, this shouldn't really turn you off. 
Now, you do have a red aura buff on when this is active, and keep in mind, you're already a glowing red man when you invade. So, you're gonna want to be as stealthy as you can. And the best tools for this are the Concealing Veil and Furled Finger Trickmare Talismans. Concealing Veil when wanting to get close to lock on with Reign of Arrows, but be aware of how close you are and that using Reign of Arrows will make you visible to your target. Having to stay crouched to be invisible is also a hindrance when trying to move quickly. You could use Assassin's Gambit to make yourself partially invisible, which has the same range as the Concealing Veil. But personally, I like using Furled Finger Trick Mare to cover long distances, as yes, you aren't invisible, but it makes it much better than being a bright fluorescent red sign. I would recommend having your talisman set up to where you can swap to Furled Finger Trick Mare, Concealing Veil, and Ritual Sword Talisman quickly between each other, as before you take that shot, you should switch to the Ritual Sword to gain the additional damage. Of course, this is all how I play this build, and you can certainly use it the way that feels the most comfortable to you. And there's more I could talk about, but that's another video in of itself. I just wanted to give this possibility to you if interested in trying. So now you got everything you need. You got the stats, you got the bow, you got the arrow. More than likely you'll have to practice and that can be its own process, but you will gradually get better. Even myself, I'm no ancestral or albaneric archer, and I've been using great bows for quite a while now. I do have a few tips that I can give you that will help though. One, if you weren't aware, you can jump and ready the bow, which not only helps you relocate yourself if needed, you also mitigate your hitbox, which could allow to dodge an incoming attack. Once you land, you'll be able to fire an arrow soon after, and contrary to what some may think, you do in fact shoot faster when jumping versus standing still, but it does cost additional stamina of a jump and is only slightly faster. Two, if a target is close range and you have the great bow ready, if you lock back onto them, you can snap your character's aim and be able to hit them relatively easily. If you've played with a great bow in Dark Souls 3, you know what I'm talking about. Keep in mind, you can't release the arrow as fast in Elden Ring, but it's still a reliable way to hit a close target. 3. If an opponent is close and you have the arrow ready, you can use an item like a sparking perfume or gravity fan to surprise them since whenever you use an item while aiming, it cancels into the consumables animation. Lastly, I'd recommend either hard or soft swapping to a Stormhawk Axe for the Ash of War to surprise opponents when they get too close. Believe me, you'll be glad you had one whenever the situation arrives. With all that being covered, that's all that I have for you. I'm sure there's more info out there that can be discovered or optimized, but I hope if nothing else, you learn something new or feel like pulling back that great arrow. I know Elden Ring PvP can be annoying and frustrating, but using great bows definitely helped me relax a bit more and not take the game so seriously. Getting a kill with a great bow felt infinitely more deserved than some Ash of War spam or cheesy weapons. I'm still enjoying Elden Ring if you're wondering by the way. And yeah, sure, I get my own helping of salt here and there, but just taking it easy and trying dumb stuff that may not be considered try hard makes this game more enjoyable in my opinion. Anyway, have a great one, and until next time friend, this has been Derpy, I'll see you guys later.